Normally, with a Fabia or something like an A-can, you, you see there's the individual heads and polyps with the individual mouths, and then there's the set tag, which separate each individual from the other. Normally, with a bandsaw, that's the beauty of it, is you can actually cut along the set tag, and you don't have to sever any of the mouths. Now, a specimen this big and this healthy will be fine. You can cut right across the mouth, no problem. That's actually how you frag a scolioma, is you cut them directly across the mouth. As long as you leave part of the mouth so it can continue to feed, It'll keep growing. I'm gonna have to really have to crank the blade up. I don't know if I can cut the ring up anymore. Yeah, it has seen many, many better days. I may almost have to go to the sawzall with this one. So this is gonna be interesting just because this guy's so deep. bit of water, a little bit of revive on the blade. Hey, and just so it'll it'll make a lot of noise, um, don't stand directly in front of it. Yeah, I'm it getting covered. Fit. Yeah, I know, I know I'm about to get covered, so <laughs> you may want to move that way. You want a, uh, about, yeah, five more degrees. There you go. Yeah. So I'm about to get covered in coral slime and rock <laughs> splatter, so I'm used to it. Doesn't bother me at all. turn them around and run them back across again. Now I'm take the Dremel to them and try to get through the rest of this skeleton. I may have to break out the saws on that. This thing's pretty deep. This Dremel blade is going to be deep enough because it's a pretty big guy. I'm going to have to do something slightly unorthodox, but you know, that's what I regularly do. Screwdriver. Nope, that's still pretty good and solid. So, next plan take the Dremel. The only downside with the Dremel tool is the blade gets really hot. So you tend to lose the tissue immediately next to wherever you make a cut with a Dremel, unless you've got you know, somebody sitting there with a little spray bottle to keep it cool the entire time. Um, usually try to run it about half power. You don't want to run it at full capacity because there's a good chance you could hit a really tough spot, either a deposit of magnesium or something like that, which will throw a blade and then you got Dremel blade coming back at you, which is never fun. So. Don't mind the smell. It's going to smell like burning hair because you're cooking live tissue. So. It smells like being a dentist. Sounds like being at the Other way. You can see I'm going to go ahead and make a cut across first, and then I'm going to work down to my line where I cut, and then I'm try to cut another one like this to leave two small frags and then half of the colony hole. But go ahead and cut your line first, that way you're not trying to cut and then go back and adjust and then go back and adjust. Cut you a straight line and work down from it there. <laughs> gotten it most of the way through and come back on this side and try to touch up. Maybe. <laughs> Sweet. So we're gonna go to the other one now.
Now, sometimes, like with this guy, you're just not going to be able to cut all the way through. And then comes the fun part. But for me, I like to frag most stuff with a hammer and chisel because it's really the quickest, easiest way to go through a bunch of soft stuff, especially like zoanthids or mushrooms. Pick a good spot in the middle, work directly down, and if you do it right, you should come right across the lines you cut and pop it off just like that. Put it back in your water. This, uh, this water I squeezed a little bit of revive into. Um, peroxide works as well. Uh, coral itself, there's a number of products out there that are really good for coral health post-cutting. Um, and now that I've cut across, I have my line this way, so I'm going to take the Dremel, try to go across here and do the same thing and pop another.